Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel. I'm your host Rama, and in today's video we are going to be doing a top 5 video on the best cheap vehicles you can buy that will give you some protection or a little bit of defense in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now the first car we're going to be taking a look at is the Shafter V12 Armored. This is the cheapest vehicle you can actually buy on Legendary Motorsport and if you put on the Armored variant it's 325000 And for the price you pay you actually get quite a a bit of protection. So we're going to shoot at the front glass and as you can see it is semi bulletproof. It survives I think around like 26 rifle rounds which is not bad at all. If you're getting shot at by a player that just doesn't like you, that right there is enough time for you to pull around the corner in your car and not get shot. Although I should point out as you can see with the minigun, you can completely bust through the windows with any minigun or high powered weapon. So do be careful about that. Another really nice thing about the armored variant of the Shafter V12 is it can survive one explosion as you can see. So overall for 300 grand you're getting a car that in my opinion is just really good if you're trying to get around a corner without being killed. If there's somebody that you really don't trust and they might try to blow you up or you know shoot an RPG at you, you do have the opportunity to survive one explosion and as well this is actually a really fast car. So if there's somebody shooting at you, chances are especially with the semi bulletproof glass they're not going to hit you. I mean this is a fantastic car. I still use this car even even with how much money I have in my main account, because it's such a fast vehicle. It's able to achieve a top speed of over 124 miles per hour. That's the same as the Adder. Now, sure, that's nothing crazy when it comes to some of the faster sports cars or supercars in the game, but when it comes to armored vehicles, this is actually one of the fastest armored vehicles you can own, which means that you got a little bit of protection, plus you're getting from point A to point B in the fastest time possible. I personally believe that this is actually a great buy that anybody should own, but the fact that it's so cheap just makes it great as well if you're starting off in GTA Online. Next up on the list, we have the Duke O Death. This is a very nice and mean looking muscle car and it will serve you a lot of protection, not only from air vehicles like the Oppressor Mark II, but as well from gunfire, it's actually quite well protected. Now, unfortunately, the driver's seat window, you'll notice has a very big slit where, yeah, you can be shot straight through and as well, the side of the windows can also be shot through. But all of the armor plating that is orange, you cannot shoot through whatsoever. The back of the car's also completely protected so it's really only the front slit on the window and the sides that you have to be careful of in fact a lot of the times what I do with the Duco death is just reverse the car towards people trying to shoot at me you will notice when you're not inside of the vehicle it only takes two explosions to blow up but when it comes to homing launchers if you are inside of the Duke it's gonna take nine homing missiles that means if an oppressor mark II is shooting at you yeah it's gonna take a lot of hits especially with its newly nerfed missiles to actually take you out. If you're inside of the vehicle as well, it takes three RPGs. Now, the price tag for the Duke is free if you are a returning player to Grand Theft Auto Online. If you aren't, then it's going to cost you $665,000. But honestly, even paying six hundred dollars for a vehicle like this is not a bad deal at all. This car can basically do whatever you need it to. Unlike the Shafter, where it can only survive one explosion, this vehicle trades a bit of that frontal protection on not having bulletproof windows, but at the same time, it can survive so much more. It's a much more well-rounded vehicle. And you'll notice that the Duke doesn't care about what's in front of it. It can literally smash into vehicles on the road and just keep on driving like nothing happened. That is something great about the Duke that feels amazing is that you don't really get slowed down when you crash into pedestrians or drivers on the road. The only problem with the Duke is that it is a bit slippery on the driving, obviously training out when I'm recording this, but in general, because it's a much heavier muscle car, it does have a bit of a problem here and there with handling overall, but it actually has a top speed over 120 miles per hour when fully upgraded. So it's fast, it's got the ability to just smash into cars like that, not care, and it's also an extremely cheap vehicle that offers insane amounts of protection. This is a vehicle that is a must buy if you are a newer player in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now we move on to the Armored Karuma. I mean, it was pretty obvious that this vehicle was going to make the list. It is just such an amazing vehicle at one thing, and that is protection against bullets. The Armored Karuma is by far the best vehicle to do missions in Grand Theft Auto with. 
because you can't be shot through it. It does look like the bullets are going through the glass, but as you'll notice, the glass doesn't break at all. You can keep shooting it and shooting it over and over. Heck, I can pull out a minigun and literally nothing happens. But there is a downside. While the Kruma has this fantastic protection, it cannot survive a single explosive from anything which definitely is a bummer. So if you're using this vehicle in a Grand Theft Auto online lobby, the Karuma can fall apart fairly quickly. Now, the vehicle cost 525,000 to get your hands on, which is not terrible. You do need to play in the Fleeka job to unlock it, but I don't think that's actually too bad of a price tag for the protection you get. If you're doing any missions or any heist setups with friends, the Karuma is 100% the way to go, especially because the vehicle looks really, really nice in my opinion, and it's actually got decent handling, unlike some of the other larger, more protected vehicles we're gonna be breaking into. Overall, the Karuma is a must have if you are starting off, especially if you want to get missions done. Unless you're in a lobby with an Oppressor Mark II spammer, then I guess you can pull out a Duco Death, but my suggestion would be to always pick up a Karuma, even if you are a player that is quite late in the game, because it's always nice to have a bit of protection when doing missions. Weirdly enough, while the Armored Karuma does look very fast, it's actually one of the slower vehicles in the list so far, only having a top speed of 109 miles per hour. It's okay in handling, but I'll definitely say that if you're going for top speed, the Karuma is definitely not the kind of vehicle you're gonna want like it'll get you there but not in the fastest of manners even a vehicle like the duco death or the shafter will get you way way faster to your location if you're looking to survive missiles or just about anything in the apocalypse, the Insurgent is the way you're going to want to go. The Insurgent can survive a literal bajillion bullets. If you're shooting anywhere but the windows, this vehicle is basically impervious, even if you're using a minigun. However, the windows are quite weak. You'll notice they have a bit of armor, but once you get through that armored protection, the driver is going to die very, very quickly. So do not use the Insurgent itself as an armored vehicle against Ground troops. What you should be using it against is anybody in an Oppressor Mark II or shooting missiles at you because as you're gonna see, this vehicle can survive 27 homing missiles. I mean, that is a truly stupid amount. If an Oppressor Mark II is shooting at you, it's going to have to respawn its Oppressor to then shoot more missiles to blow this vehicle up, meaning that you're basically impervious to the skies. Now, if there is a laser shooting at you or a Hydra, yeah, you're kinda screwed. But at the price tag of only $675,000, the amount of protection you get is pretty insane. There might be some people asking, why didn't I put the Night Shark on the list? And the real reason is because the Night Shark cost over a million dollars. And this is a way better price for the deal. I think that the Insurgent is just a bit slower than the Night Shark. And really, that's the only disadvantage you'll have. Maybe windowed protection, but... Honestly, I don't really find myself getting killed too much by ground troops nowadays. It's more oppressor spamming missiles at me. And the Insurgent, while it's not the fastest vehicle, can still reach a top speed of around 100 miles per hour, which means that you'll get from point A to point B in at least a decent amount of time. For the fifth and final vehicle of today's video, we have the Dune FAV. Now, this is not a very well-protected vehicle. It has no doors. Its frontal protection is awful. The only spot that's actually really good is the rear. Nothing can shoot you in the back if you're driving away. Way, but you do got to be really careful in this vehicle. The reason I chose it is down to the fact that, first of all, if you do own the Criminal Enterprise Starter Pack, it's absolutely free. And even if you don't, it's the only of the Warstock gun running vehicles that is under $1 million. There's a couple reasons why it's great. First of all, if you get it fully upgraded, you have a mini gun. And uh, yeah, this Mini Cooper, no more. Bye bye. This gun is amazing. It has the ability to absolutely decimate literally any anything in front of it in a matter of seconds, like you can see these poor police cars here. And that is one reason why the vehicle is fantastic, and as you can see, it's very easy to swap between the gunner seat and as well the driver's seat while the vehicle's still running. It's actually great for missions. I've used this myself on my free account, well not my free account, but my account where I've started off as level one, and it's just great because even though it's not upgraded, I can still use the gun it comes equipped with, not spending any money on ammo, and very easily killing enemies in front of me. You'll also notice when this vehicle is fully equipped, equipped that you have proximity mines that you can infinitely drop and because this is actually a very quick vehicle even if somebody's trying to chase you an online player for example you can just continuously drop proximity mines and yeah, they're probably not going to enjoy it now this here is a perfect example of let's say me on my account where i'm like level 20 right now and while i do not have the upgrades for the vehicle even the stock gun as this is a fully stocked dune fav you'll see that the mg is really solid on this car you think that it doesn't do a lot of damage, but no, 
though, it absolutely decimates cars in front of it. It'll about two-shot any player aiming at you. I personally think that the Dune FAV for being under a million dollars, the amount of firepower you get as a starting off player is actually great. And as I said, I don't have to spend money on ammo, which means this is saving me a huge amount on ammunition. So overall, I think the Dune FAV is a fantastic vehicle, and once you get it upgraded with the off-road capabilities and the fact that it's actually got really good handling with the proximity mines and everything else is really great. You can see here, just swap it onto the other seat, and I mean the cops literally stand no chance. There you go, that cop car's already on fire. Now we start shooting at the other car, all gone. I mean. It is really actually a super strong vehicle. So either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you guys think about the top five budget cars I've picked. But if you agree or disagree, please let me know as I'm always up to changing or making another video in the future. But other than that, hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.